Hi everyone, it's Sean from OneUp and welcome back to another video and happy Wheel of Time Wednesday. Of course, we got a new clip today from the Wheel of Time production team and this is about two minutes of the beginnings of Nynaeve's Accepted Test. So we're going to show the clip here on the channel and then we'll talk about how it fits into Season 2, what some of the changes from the books may be, and overall I'll speculate on what we're going to see during her test. This is pretty exciting, folks. Now, because there isn't a traditional marketing campaign right now for Season 2 of Wheel of Time, we're kind of thinking that we're going to get daily Wheel of Time content. Now, because of the WGA and the SAG strikes, we're not getting anything really promoted by the cast or the crew or the production team, but there's a whole lot of stuff dropping in either major publications or on X, which is formerly Twitter. Now, I know a lot of you don't know which publications to look at every day because let's face it, they're different every single day. And unless you're really looking hard, you're probably not going to find it. And I know many of you don't have an X account and never really wanted a Twitter account before. Don't worry, I got you covered. We'll talk about it every single night here in the channel. If anything drops during the day, expect a video from me that evening about all of the new Wheel of Time stuff coming out pre-season two. Now, when season two drops, I'm going to do a review, an Easter egg, and a breakdown video for every single episode. And of course, keep you up to date on all of the news. And then after that's done, as soon as episode eight drops, expect to see a ton. And I'm actually saying a lot. Like I have a whole lot saved up of season three leaks for you folks um, to tide us over because it may be another year or two before we see Season 3. I hope it's not two years like it was between Season 1 and Season 2, but you never know. Either way, if you like any of that stuff, whether it be the news, the breakdowns, or the leaks, make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's a ton of it coming your way. Now, we're going to talk about that accepted test clip today, so I have to give a bit of a spoiler warning. So, spoiler warning! In today's video, since we're talking about elements of Season 2 of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show, if you have not read the first three books of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, that's The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, and The Dragon Reborn, or have seen the entire first season of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show streaming on Prime Video right now, it's episodes 1 through 8, be forewarned, I may ruin plot points and character arcs from both of those mediums. All right, let's take a look at that clip. What are they? Terran Grail. What do they do? Many things, child. They are from before the breaking. Made during a time when women could create objects from the One Power itself. Some Terran Grail are made to work by Aes Sedai, like this one. Others do what they do simply with the presence of any woman who can channel. We don't know why they were made. Most we've learned at great cost to avoid. Many Aes Sedai have been killed or burned out learning that. Do you want me to just walk through them? We know what this one does. It will bring you face to face with your greatest fears and what those fears are, are for you to know. And you need to tell no more than you wish. So, what, I just walk through one arch and out again? Three times through and it's done? If you wish to boil it down that far, yes. Two things we will tell you now that no woman hears until she's in this room. The first, once you begin, you must continue to the end. Refuse to go on, and you will be put out of the tower with enough silver to support you for a year, but you will never be allowed back. Second, to seek, to strive, is to know danger, and you will know danger here. Some women have entered and never come out. This is your last chance, child. You may turn back now, right now, and you will only have one mark against you. Twice more, you'll be allowed to come here, and only on the third refusal will you be put out of the tower. I myself cannot do it the first time here. If you are doing this for someone else, you will fail. Do this for you, or not at all. I'm ready. All right, so uh, I don't know about you folks, but I'm pretty excited about season two and seeing clips like this just sort of cement the idea that season two is gonna be much better than season one. Everything seems to be a little bit more polished, a little bit more professional, and just a little bit bigger and better. The acting, of course, was top notch in season one, and it stays that way, at least from all the promotional material we've seen, but the costumes have taken a step up. I think the sets also have taken a step up, the lighting, the way things are shot, the camera work, all of it seems to be just a bit better. I'm pretty excited to do my reviews when they drop because I think they're going to be a bit better, or a lot better rather, than the reviews I had for season one. 
Now, this clip showcases the beginnings of Nynaeve's accepted test. It's a little bit different from the books. So in the books, we have the accepted test happening in the bowels of the tower, much like it is here. However, not exactly the same people are there and the archways are silver, they're connected, and there's a couple of little subtle differences there. But what's really going to change, I think, is what happens when Nynaeve enters the first, second, and third archway during her accepted test, because they can't show the same things that happened in the books because of the changes they made for season one. Now, they may, I think, kind of keep things the same for perhaps the third archway, but number one and number two, I think may be a little bit different. So let's get into what I think they're going to do in those archways. And again, this is a healthy dose of speculation and we'll compare it to what happens in the books. All right, so there's going to be a couple of differences, I think. So not only is the Terra Grail a little bit different, the kind of setting a bit different, who's there a little bit different. Um, I don't believe Nynaeve's going to have to undress to do this. It's kind of a, a pointless thing, I think. Um, you can correct me in the comments down below if you like or if you have a different opinion on this, but uh, I didn't think it really added much flavor to the goings-on of the Aes Sedai, um, maybe other than a little bit more ritualistic. And they may cut all of that out for the show, uh, and she'll probably go in just in her regular clothes as she is in the, uh, like, her, her novice white, so to speak. Now, um, in the first arch, so there's three arches that Nynaeve has to go through. In the first arch, she has to face a fear from her past. Now, in the book series, Nynaeve faced Agnor again. Now, if you remember, at the end of the Eye of the World, the book, or for those of you who haven't read the books, Nynaeve faced two Forsaken, Agnor and Bathamel. We didn't see them in the show at all. In fact... There's a big consensus among the fans that they're likely cut from the show altogether or amalgamated or merged into Other Forsaken. Now, in the book series, she faced Agnor again because it was one of those things where she felt if she didn't destroy him now, he would always haunt her, always chase her. So that's the very first fear or the very first thing she had to face in the first archway. That's not going to happen in the show because she never faced any of the Forsaken. Now, the only things that I can think of here is perhaps they're going to go back to Tarwin's Gap again um, and she's going to face that over again. Or maybe, just maybe, she's going to go all the way back to Emmons Field on Winter Night. Now, in the teaser trailer and a bunch of the other promotional material, we've seen a couple of images of Nynaeve back in Emmons Field. She's in Stout Two Rivers Woolens, and here it appears that she's just channeling a ton of the One Power and blasting it out around her in this sort of uh, dome. And there's Trollocs outside the dome, they seem to be thrown back. So we're thinking that this is likely from her accepted test. Is it the past? I would say so. That's my guess anyway. I think she's probably going to relive the events of Winter Night and then actually channel while she's there. Now, in the book series, um, there was kind of a big deal with Nynaeve channeling during her accepted test because most Aes Sedai didn't channel during it. And in fact, most Aes Sedai didn't even remember they could channel. They just had this one driving urge and the one thought repeating in their head, the way well, way back will come, but once be steadfast. Um, but Nynaeve is a bit different. She was able to channel during her accepted test, so I'm thinking we're going to see the same thing here. And in the first archway, rather than facing one of the Forsaken, she'll likely face the Trollocs on Winter Night again uh, to try to save her friends and family in Emmons Field. Now, as Nynaeve went through the second arch in the book series, it was a little bit worse than the first arch, and then again, the third was even worse than that. The second arch had to do with fears of the present. In the book series, she faced the fears of a different wisdom in Emmons Field that was treating everyone terribly, and she had to stay to sort of fix all the problems that were happening in Emmons Field. It was really hard for her to leave her friends and family behind uh, when she went back through the archway, but she was able to do so. That may be the case for the show and they may keep that exactly the same because it's not a far stretch to be able to do that now i can't recall of any instance where they actually filmed on a two river set for season two but it wouldn't be that hard to film a small bit on the sound stage here and there um, because let's face it it would be really easy to include a new wisdom and uh, to include um, some people from alan's field without using any of the major characters that we see in season one again um as sort of like a a little tiny clip for her accepted test for the second archway. So I think it's likely they'll keep that exactly the same. The fear will probably be that after she left Emmons Field, someone else took over and they're doing a terrible job and treating everyone horribly. At least that's my guess. All right, so like I said earlier, the third archway was the absolute worst for Nynaeve in the book series. She was married to Lan. She was an revived Malkir. She was living the life she thought she always wanted. I think that's likely probably going to be the case in the show as well. 
because they've already sort of accelerated Lan and Nynaeve's relationship just a little bit, so it'll be way more believable to the audience, and it's a really easy tidbit to put in for the fans. Now, there is, I think, some evidence in the trailer that came out, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, like I said, the third archway was the worst for Nynaeve in the books, and she did not want to go back. Eventually, she remembered Egwene and the boys and decided that she had to go back to help them, but the archway disappeared, and she brings it back by sheer force of will, exits the archway, and then becomes an accepted in the White Tower. So, pretty cool stuff, and I think likely it'll be mostly the same in the show. And that has to do with this one little tidbit from the trailer that I kind of got wrong in my trailer breakdown video. So in the trailer breakdown video, I talked about this gentleman right here. There's a very short scene in which a shadowy figure with long silver hair, uh, puffy sleeves, kind of kills a fade with what appears to be a flaming sword. Now, initially I said this has to be Rand because he's the only person in the entire series that really ever used a flaming sword um, consistently anyway. Um, and the running joke was that he had all this power at his fingertips uh, of the one power he could use it for anything, and he uses it to make a sword to fight uh, Fades and Trollocs like a common soldier. So when I incorrectly said that was Rand, the fandom kind of went, no, that's not Rand at all. And there was all kinds of speculation of who this could be. So in my What I Missed video, we talked about it a fair bit. And I threw out a ton of different theories. This could have been another Forsaken using the one power to create a flaming sword. This could have been uh, a warder of some Aes Sedai. And the Aes Sedai set his sword alight as he's fighting this Fade. But we really didn't know. I think, I think though, what the best theory that I've come up with is this is likely an aged land. This might be from a Nynaeve's accepted test, sort of in the future when they're married in Malkir, the fades come, they're fighting, Nynaeve and Lan are fighting together side by side, and uh, she lights his sword so he can kill fades a little bit better. Um, Maybe a reach, maybe a little bit of a reach, but I think that would be an absolutely amazing scene to see. Um, and I'm really hoping that I'm right about that for the second season. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Um, what do you think is going to happen in the three archways? Am I close? Um, am I a little bit off? If you have a completely different theory, I'd love to hear all about it. And, and remember, we have about a little over a week and a half now before we get to see for ourselves what really happens. Because I think it's likely the accepted test takes place either at the end of the first episode or perhaps the beginning of the second. All right, so... I don't know what you folks think, but I'm really excited for season two right now. And now I know there are a lot of people out there that were disappointed in season one. There were a lot of people out there that said they would never watch the show again. And I've seen them. I've seen the same people say those things. And they're kind of creeping back into the fandom, commenting on things. And they're um, cautiously optimistic for season two. So, um, Rape Duncan's a showrunner has tempered people's expectations a number of different times. Season two will have a large amount of changes from the book series, so gird your loins. However, it is also incredibly great TV. Everyone that's worked on the second season has all basically said the same thing. It's amazing. It's leaps and bounds ahead of season one. They're going to end up, we believe, in Falma at the end, which sets up season three, which is more closely related to The Shadow Rising, the fourth book. So we're going to get the Battle of the Two Rivers. We're going to get other things that are happening there. Um, and I can't wait to see how they kind of get to Falma and how they get around uh, the things that are happening in The Great Hunt and The Dragon Reborn and kind of mash them together for season two. So let me know your thoughts on this down below. Are you excited for some of the changes that we already know are happening for season two? Um, and uh, will you be watching it on release? So right now, I believe the Prime Video app is still saying 3 a.m. Eastern is the release time for the show on September 1st. So that means that I have my alarm set right now um, for 2.55 so I can get up, I can get a cup of coffee, I can sit down, I can watch the show. And then I'll be doing a review video immediately afterwards. I'll watch the first episode, do my review, and post it. So for those of you who are night owl, owls uh, in North America, you're going to get my video probably somewhere around 4.30, quarter to 5 Eastern. Um, and that's it's pretty early. Then I'm going to work on my Easter egg video. I'll drop that probably around lunchtime. And then my breakdown video will be closer to uh, the evening. Um, and then second episode, I'll watch that night. Same thing, review late night. The next morning will be the Easter eggs. The following evening will be breakdown, and we'll do that for the third episode as well. And then if there's any news for the rest of the week, any goings on, uh, any premieres, any other stuff that's actually happening, I'll do news videos to round out the week. And then the following Friday when episode four drops, I will be doing the same thing. I will be up early. I'll be making the review video, dropping it for you folks, and then making my Easter egg and my breakdown videos afterwards. So 
You're not going to miss any of the stuff. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. There's a ton of Wheel of Time content you're coming your way. Now, thank you so very much for sticking with us here to the very end, and here's to many more.